Who's, yeah, let's get hyped. Oh man, I love having fun with you guys. All right, let's clap our hands. Come on. Who's ready to fill this place with some joy tonight? Yeah? Come on. Arise, my soul. Arise, my soul. Jesus lives in me, for I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light.
to be in your presence. What a joy. Holy Spirit, we invite you in right now. Church, why don't you just lift your hands to heaven? It's not a weird thing to do, it's an act of surrender. It's a physical form of going, God, we're welcoming you in. Body, mind, soul, spirit. Have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory tonight. Mm. And our fight is with weapons unseen. Your enemies crash to their knees as we rise up. As we cry out in worship, join me, cry out to God tonight. The victory is yours, you're riding on the storm. Your name is unfailing, though kingdoms rise and fall, your throne withstands. Shape-breaking King, rise to save as we cry out in worship. Yes, we cry out, God. The victory is yours. You're riding on the shore. Your name is on.
Nothing can tame God, all powerful, all powerful. We pull down heaven with shouts of praise, God. Jesus, there is nothing like your love. 
nothing like it, no. Such a sweet love, such a sweet love. In your presence, Lord. No, I can't get. Your amazing love. No, I can't get enough, and I can't walk away. No, I can't walk away. For I have seen your face. And I can't walk away And I just want to be where you are And I just want to be near your heart There is nothing like your love There is nothing like your love Holy is the Lord God Almighty.
Jesus, I love you. Psalm 34 says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. And this is one of my favourite verses because I just think as a church, we, as the church, glorify the Lord together. We exalt His name together. And what a beautiful thing that we can come together and lift our eyes to Him and give Him all the worship that He deserves. And so as a church, we're just gonna pray and then we're gonna get into church. But Lord, we just thank You so much for everything that You have done for us. We thank You for dying on the cross. We thank You for this life that You have given us. We thank You for every good thing under the sun and we thank You that You are here with us every single step of the way, through the good, through the bad, through the challenging. And we are just here today, not for our own accord, not for anything to get out of it, but we are here to worship You. We are here for You and You alone. In Jesus' Name, Amen. 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 How good. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen up the front. So good. How good is it to be at church, guys? Church, at Good Life Church at 5 p.m. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to our guests. Can we please put our hands together for all the new people here? We are so happy that you're here with us today. Um, now, we do have this new Yes Sign Me Up desk up the back there. If you all just want, I know, fancy, new, it's bold. It's crazy. If you are new, there's got this new thing called new, bump the cue. It's fun, it rhymes. And so what happens is we actually want to shout you guys a hot beverage on us. And so if you're new, please scan this, fill it in and the cafe will get your order straight away. But so you can get to know some of the people around, we're gonna put 30 seconds up on the clock and you can say hello to someone new. I want to see everyone move out of their seats. Go, 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 30, 30 seconds. Let's go, Sam. Shut up with your hot beverage later. Come on, guys. All my little extroverts, let's go. Well, <laughs> my extroverts and introverts. How good. Alrighty, so I'm just going to come around our time of generosity today, and the methods of giving will pop up behind me, but this is something that I've incorporated into my Christian walk. And the one thing that I want to just focus on is that it's not all just about giving our money to God. And that is great. We use it to great things. Um, but it is about your time, your treasure and your talent. And so we are focusing on the Yes Sign Me Up desk at the moment, which gives you an opportunity to sign up to a dream team. And so giving of your time and your talent and your treasure to the church is a biblical concept. And it's something that God really encourages. And so that's something that can help you. It's an easy pathway um, to sign up, to sign up to a dream team, to learn a bit more about tithing. But if you are unsure about tithing, if you're like, this is the first time I've heard of it, I don't really understand what this means. Talk to the person that brought you, talk to your connect group leader, go to a connect group. Like this is where we do it. We do it with community. We learn about these things with each other. And so it's not a shameful thing. It's not like you should know about this. We're all learning together. And so methods are up there. We have by card, direct deposit. There's got a cash box up at the back, um, FPOS at the cafe. But apart from that, I'm gonna pray and then it'll give you time to give. But Lord, we just thank you that when we give of our um, gifts, our time and our treasure, Lord, that you can use it for so much more than we ever could. And I just thank you that you will bless every single person here that's giving today and that it'll go to amazing work for your kingdom in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know if you know this, but there are some really cool things coming up in the life of Life Church. There's so much coming up. One thing I'm very passionate about, um, but to tell you a little bit more about it, there is a Good Life update that's gonna be up there now. 
G'day church and welcome. My name is Sam and you're tuning in for the Good Life Update. There is a bunch of things coming up in Term 3 and kicking right off, we have All In on the 24th for Newcastle and the 25th for Toronto. All In is when we gather as a church fam, all the dream teamers are there. We're hearing about the forward momentum of the church. We're soaking in the richness of worship. We're praising our God and we're having some amazing time together. Every dream teamer, I wanna see you there. Both services will kick off at 6.45 p.m. but make sure you come a little bit earlier, hang out with the team. We can't wait to see you there. The Good Life Marriage Retreat is fast approaching, but on the 24th of July, the late bird prices are starting. So make sure you snag a great deal while you can before the prices go up. And when you register, you will receive a discount code for the accommodation Mobies. We have special guests John and Gillian Cameron joining us. What an honor. So if you are a married couple or an engaged couple like myself, you need to be there. I've been told I need to be there. So it's on the 11th to the 12th of August. It's at beautiful Boomerang Beach. Make sure you snag a great deal while you can and we'll catch you there. Red Frog School is 2023 applications are now open. If you want to join the Red Froggers as they head up to the Gold Coast for week two of schoolies, then now is the time to apply. The Red Froggers are safeguarding the next generation and they need your help. If you're interested, you can head to redfrogs.com.au slash apply or come chat to Abigail Johnson or Beck Harrison if you're interested. And now we got a quick video to show you what Red Frog Schoolies is all about. Prayer meetings and creative are kicking off for term three this week. We encourage everyone to come to these nights. We lay hands on the sick, we pray for our city, we pray for one another and we worship our God. So make sure you're there 6.30 p.m. Tuesday nights. Now, you may have seen these around. These are the new bump to queue cards. If you're new at Good Life Church, you can scan this QR code, fill out your details, put your favorite coffee order in. Maybe yours is an iced vanilla latte on almond milk on a cold winter's morning. I'm a bit extra. So once you've filled out your coffee order, you will bump the queue. It will be sent to the cafe and one of our friendly baristas will have it delivered to you shortly. Guys, that's all from me this week. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you next time. Okay, hello. Um, so uh, schoolies, obviously, I'm gonna plug that. You should all sign up. Um, if you do have questions, please just come chat to myself or Beck Harrison, wave your hands. And, uh, but tomorrow we have all in for all dream teamers or if you're interested in being part of the dream team, please come along 6.45 tomorrow night here in Newcastle. And we have dessert as well, so like, if nothing else, you get dessert. So, but we're gonna hear amazing things about the forward momentum of Good Life Church. And so you really don't wanna miss out on that. But tonight we have a special treat. We have Pastor Dave, who will be preaching the Word of God to us. So can you please stand to your feet and give a round of applause for Pastor Dave. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Matt. Okay, cheers. 
All right, you can take your seat. Oh, jog on. I do have to come up with something that doesn't uh, allow the cheap jokes to continue from my unfunny son. Have you ever read a Choose Your Own Adventure book? They were my favorite books in school. Actually, nothing was favorite in school, but it was the favorite book that I ever read in my schooling career. Um, and if we can bring up, this was my favorite book ever. It was a Choose Your Own Adventure. It was number two, Journey Under the Sea. Hands up those that read the book, know the book. I tell you what, what a fantastic book. It was fantastic for a young man of my age and uh, ADD status to be able to actually focus. Now, what you need to know about this book is that you would get to a certain part and then the submersible was either gonna go down that canyon underneath the water to chase after that fish, or maybe it's gonna go up to get oxygen because that sounds more wise. And you could go, do I turn to page 25? Do I turn to page 37? But either way, I get to choose the adventure. And this is what happened in this book. Look at the top, look at the top there. You're the hero of the story. Choose from 42 possible endings. What a story. What an absolute story. It reminds me of life and the way that we handle relationships. Every decision is a fork in the road. Every decision, every moment, every opportunity, every interaction, every large value decision in your life is a fork in the road and it will lead either upwards or downwards. It either leads to more struggles or more strength to overcome obstacles and, and tackle opportunities. Um, in 1998, in a previous millennium, there was a movie uh, called Sliding Doors. Now we're gonna bring up the image of sliding doors. A young Gwyneth Paltrow, and on, <laughs> when she's up the right way, she's got blonde hair. And when she's upside down, she's got dark hair. But this is to let you know, here's, the, here's basically how the, the movie went. And I didn't watch it because I'm a Christian, but just to let you know, I'm gonna let you know from Wikipedia what the, uh, the bio of the movie was. It was a 1998 romantic comedy drama starring Gwyneth Paltrow. The film alternates between two storylines. Obviously, one storyline with blonde Gwyneth and another with brunette Gwyneth. Two storylines showing two paths that the central character's life could take depending on whether she catches a train. So does she, with the sliding door, the open door of the train, does she step onto the train or does she not? And you get to follow the two different stories of what happens in Gwyneth's life. It shows that in every moment, every decision, every relationship, every interaction, we are either stepping onto the train or we're stepping off of the train. You ever wonder what could have happened in your life if you made different decisions earlier? But by the same token, ever imagine what could happen in your future if you change the trajectory of the decisions right now? All I know is that God's best is ready for you and I, and sometimes we follow the world's way. Sometimes we follow our emotions. I've just found out that my emotions are not a very good thing to follow, because sometimes I'm feeling brilliant and sometimes I'm feeling belligerent, and that could be minutes apart. To follow my emotions would be, well, immature at best, and the world would say, how do you feel, just follow that. Hey, how, how, what do you think about yourself? Just follow that. I'm just gonna suggest it's not a good idea. Follow those things, follow those emotions, follow those temptations at your own peril. There are sliding doors right in front of us and you'll either get on the train of God's best for your life or you'll be on another train going to a different destination. Um, last year, last year was what Bex and I would consider our biggest crisis in our marriage. Now, last year, there was a couple of crazy things that happened. One of those was going through a whole bunch of the, forget lockdown for a second, was all around the vaccine wildness. And some people went off the deep end. Isn't that true? Absolutely off the deep end. And in the middle of working out how do we handle certain situations, Bex and I faced the largest crisis of our marriage. It was the biggest disagreement. But we're through it. Right? I mean, mum and dad were fighting a little bit. 
It was not easy. Actually, it was quite painful and very difficult to keep our heads on while we stood on principle and stood on our values from two very different angles. Now, can I say that we would have never gotten through unless there was a train that we were both on individually and together for a long, long time before. There's no way I would have navigated through that world unless when I was 16, yes, as a 16-year-old risk, bingo, there's a girl at school who invited me to church and I said yes. That sent me on a trajectory. That was a sliding door moment. As I said yes, it opened my world up to a whole lot. Now, I, it was somebody else's decision to invite me. There was, there was a couple in the church that opened up their home to me. It was someone else's decision. They slid open the door and I said, yes, actually my parents said that was allowable. And I would stay at this couple's house every single weekend. That was other people's decisions. They were opening those doors. I'm so glad that I, when, when I was a teenager, I went to a youth camp as a part of, of, of the INC church at Foster, now local church. I was a part, I was part of a youth group and I went to a youth camp and I don't remember much, it was a very, very long time ago. Back when I was a teenager, not just the TVs were black and white, life was actually also black and white. And you had to walk 40 miles to the bus stop and that bus was actually just a horse with 17 other children. We used to have to make our own rulers. You know those rulers, you would, you would measure things by rulers, but you'd have to go down to the bush and cut down your own tree and mark them. Is that what happened, Pam? No, it's not what happened. Hey? It was back in the day, we were back in the day. But I remember going to this youth camp. I don't remember much about the youth camp. It was in a previous millennium. But I remember the youth, the speaker, he said, let me get this right. He said, don't chase a spouse, chase after the call of God. He said, there's some people that are so focused on chasing after love and romance that they forget the call of God. But a life is actually built upon values and vision and direction. If you forego the vision that God's got for your life and chase after romance and chase after those emotions, you will miss the call of God, which is the train tracks that God's got you on. That's the purpose that He's put you on the planet. There is the life of God that He's got for your life inside and outside the four walls of the church. Don't chase after a spouse. Chase after the call of God. See if there's someone else who chases after God and His calling as much as you do and see what God does as He unites your hearts. I'm so glad that He said that because my first ever Christian girlfriend, and I thought this was it. I mean, she was, we were great friends. She was easy on the eye. She loved Jesus. She loved the house. I'm like, is there anything else? This is awesome. She went on a missions trip. She went to Thailand with her family. She comes back from this mission trip to Thailand, and she says, um, it wasn't a proper missions trip. I said, well, what was it? She said, well, my family has been asked by INC to oversee everything of INC in Thailand and Southeast Asia. And I went, okay, that's a bit of a deal. And she says, my parents have said yes, and I've said yes to going. And I went, well, I don't wanna go. I said, and I said, I thought this was a thing. She goes, well, the call of God's taking me there. And I said, I'm called to Australia. I'm called to lead a church, I'm called to reach people. I said, I'll travel, but I don't want to live there. And so we made a decision based upon the sliding door of that youth camp way back when to chase after the call of God, not after a spouse. We just went, well, I suppose that's it for our relationship. And we ended it on good terms. Wouldn't know how to actually handle that situation if I hadn't have actually got on the sliding door and got on the train of actually saying, God, I wanna chase after you and everything you've got for me. And that was gonna be the thing, the guardrails that protect and guide my life. That sense of calling meant that when I asked the wonderful Rebecca Joy Lorenz to go out with me, I mean, she's only flesh and blood, of course she was gonna say yes. But we sat on a park bench atop Mount Gravatt Classy, <laughs> absolutely classy. Think Mount Sugarloaf, but more Bogan. <laughs> and I gave her a single rose and I said, I would love it. 
I would love it if you would consider not moving back to New Zealand. I said, if this romance, if this relationship is going anywhere, it's got to include, and I said, I'm not asking you to commit to this right now, but if this romance goes anywhere, I know I'm called to pastor, I'm called to reach people in Australia. Your family lives in New Zealand. So I just said, Here's the, this is how it works. I'm committed to God, I'm committed to the call of God, and I know that God will bring along the right person for that journey. I don't have the confidence to do that, have that conversation unless years before I was on a train, there was a sliding door moment that got me to the next moment, that got me to the next moment. Could you imagine if I hadn't have had that confidence could you imagine if, and sometimes it's going through difficult times and standing upon principle and not going via emotions and actually saying, what's the call of God? When she said yes and we were going out, I tell you what, here's a difficult thing because both of us had gone beyond God's plan for our lives physically with other people before we met. We had gone too far physically and emotionally past God's plan of what adultery and fornication is all about. Both of us had actually broken hearts and had our own hearts broken by committing too much to another person. And so we'd both come into that relationship going, I don't wanna do that again. There was a sliding door moment where we said, I want to, I said, I wanna honor any gal that I get involved with because she's either my princess for life or she's someone else's. And I don't wanna mess with mine and I certainly don't wanna mess with someone else's. And Bex had made the same call. We had a sliding door moment that was based, there were other things that happened in my life and there were sliding door moments where we, I walked into on purpose because I'd said, I don't wanna do the wrong thing and harm myself or other people. But this was a situation where I'd actually learnt from doing the wrong thing and thought, I don't wanna do that again. Sliding door moments that make things work in the long run. And we built a trust and a love and a connection that then continued on into marriage where we started our first couple of years of, uh, of marriage. Bex talked about this last year in our relationship series. It was horrendous. A conflict was just terrible. I was raised in a home where if there was conflict, you pretend like there is none, you go to your room and you only come out where you could go, ah, oh, nothing happened, forget that. Bex was raised with South Africans. I've never met a South African that isn't very sure about their opinion. They argue for sport. It's true, isn't it, Nordy? It's flat out true. And it's not like they hate each other. We went, before we got married, we went to a family, a Lorenz family gathering. And I came, I'm driving back and I'm like, why do they hate each other? She goes, oh, that was just a discussion, babe. <laughs> That's not a fight. You wait till the fights happen. That's gonna be another story. If we hadn't have worked out how to do conflict and not be led by emotion, because my emotion wanted to clam up and Beck's emotion wanted to blow up and both of us actually had to change to have a functional marriage. Could you imagine being that dysfunctional and then throwing children in? Oh my gosh, that's a recipe for disaster. But God gave us by His grace that journey where we could actually have the opportunity to go, right, we're gonna deal with this or not. We don't get through the crisis of 2022, if it wasn't for every one of those sliding door moments all the way through of saying yes to God and yes to His ways. There's not a chance that we get that through. I chose my own adventure and I took a risk on the cute Kiwi and I'm so glad about it. Robert Frost wrote a poem and so all the English nerds are gonna be really happy tonight. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler so long I stood. Looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way. I love that. I doubted if I should ever come back. There are sliding doors, decisions that have consequences. When it comes to relationships, there are consequences. I'm so glad that I risked it all 
and I asked the Kiwi girl to consider staying in Australia. I'm so glad that we learned how to fight fair, to handle disagreements. I'm so glad that I learned to man up, not clam up. I'm so glad that Bex learned to ease up <laughs> and not so much blow up. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that we made the decision to honor each other physically and follow God's ways when it came to physical boundaries. I'm so glad that we learned to trust God in our finances. And there's a similar story about sliding doors that happens in the Old Testament. It's David, he's a great, great king, but he makes some pretty serious blunders in this chapter. And there are sliding door moments where he could have gotten off or because he just keeps on following the story, it just gets worse and it gets worse. It's like a snowball, this story. It's pretty wild. And it ends chapter 11, verses 26 and 27. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead. This is where it ends. This is where the snowball ends. This, her, she heard that her husband was dead. She mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. So where does it start? It starts back, we're gonna start reading from verse two and three. One evening, David got up from his bed and he walked around on the roof of the palace. Just a bit of insomnia. He's counting sheep. I don't know, what's he doing? It's just not working. Has he had a couple of coffees before going to bed? And he's like, bing, I'm looking at the ceiling. But he can't sleep. So he goes for a walk on the roof of the palace. I'm assuming it was a flat roof because those pitched ones in the middle of the night wouldn't be easy. But he's on the roof and here's the crazy thing. As he's walking around, he saw a woman bathing. What the flip she's doing bathing in the middle of the night, I don't know. Is she bathing on top of the roof of her house? I don't know. But all I know is that David saw and he continued to look. Now, if you want to honour, guys, the Bible says, if you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, you've already committed adultery. I'm going to suggest understanding how to keep your eyes and mind with the purity of God's ways about your sister in Christ until she's no longer a sister, potentially, hopefully, your wife one day. It's understanding self-control in that journey. You can't help the first look. Sometimes girls are wearing stuff that you go, holy flip, everything points to about there. Well, the girl with, the, the girl with her, uh, her profile pic with a selfie and it's down about there. You can't help that you see that first thing, but you don't have to have a second look or a prolonged look. David, I'm not quite sure if it was a second look or a prolonged look, but it's certainly one of those. And he goes, hubba bubba ding ding, look at the bathing skills on that little thing. She is bathing, she's in her birthday suit, and the woman was very beautiful. <laughs> he knows she's beautiful because he's having a flat out perv. Have I got the right verse here? I do. Verse three, David sent someone to find out about her. I just got distracted for a second. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Ah, oh, right. So one of my fighting men, one of my greatest, one of my closest buddies, that's his wife, that's Bathsheba. Okie dokes. Well, at that point, he's got a sliding door moment. Do you walk through and follow your temptations and lust or do you actually go, nah, that's a bad train to get on? He gets on the temptation train and away he goes. He follows his emotions. His temptation says, do. God's saying, chill out, my friend, but he just goes, I'm on that train. He jumps on that train. The next verse, David sent messengers to get her. What? Mate, he jumped on that train. That went from naught to 100 very quickly. She came to him and he slept with her. What? Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. And you'd think at this point the guy would go, mate, that was a big mistake. I don't know if I want, like, is there, is there an off button? Can we get off this train right now? But David, he's caught up in it. And so one thing leads to another, leads to another. Here's my suggestion. If one thing leads to another, just don't do the one thing. Avoid the one thing. It's not good. Avoid those one things and don't let it lead to the other. But he just goes, well, we got a kid. We better deal with this. So what does he do? Uh, verse six through 13, David sent this word to Joab. 
who's the chief, who's the guy who's overseeing his, his war, send me Uriah the Hittite. Bring him here. Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Joab was and how the soldiers were and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and you don't know, no, wash your feet and hang out with your good looking missus. That's what he's trying to imply, right? Go and hang out with your missus. Because David knows that he's got Uriah's wife pregnant and he's like, this is a good cover up. I bring the guy back. He sleeps with his wife. Hey, presto. When the bub comes through, it's gonna seem about an eight month pregnancy, maybe a little bit premature, but hey, it's gonna be fine. They're all gonna think this is Uriah's kid. Um, so how's everything going? Go down to your house, wash your feet. Uriah left the palace and a gift from the king who sent Arthur in, but Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace. He didn't get the script with all the master's servants and did not go down to his house. David was told, Uriah did not go home. So he asked Uriah, haven't you just come from a military campaign? Why didn't you go home? Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents and my commander Joab and my Lord's men are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and make love to my wife? As surely as you live, I will, do, I will not do such a thing. David's like, mate, this guy is an idiot. You got the chance. She's a good looking Sheila. Off you go home, mate. But Uriah's gonna have, gonna have some principles. David says, right, we've got to take this plan to the next level. You would go, maybe that's the time to press the stop button, get off the train, but the train is still going. David said to him, stay here one more day and tomorrow I will send you back. Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. At David's invitation, he ate and drank with him and David made him drunk. Come on, mate, have another one. Come on, mate, have another one. Come on, mate, have another one. Just gonna suggest if any plan includes getting drunk, it's usually not a good one. At David's invitation, he ate and drank with him. David made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep. He's hoping, hopefully he goes back to the missus on that one. But he slept on his mat among his master's servants and he did not go home. Do you think David goes, mate, my, my plan is stuffed. Just get off the train. It's a sliding door moment, mate. There's a, there's a fork in the road. Take the road less traveled. It's the time to do it. Robert Frost would have told you, take the road less traveled. David doesn't do that. The morning David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In it, he wrote, put Uriah in front where the fighting is fiercest, then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. At what point do you, are you writing that letter and not go, you idiot. How could you be that dumb and still breathe? You're meant to be a man of God and you're following your emotions way back here and it's snowballing, but how many times in relationships we get caught in a cycle and we just follow it down without just going, can we stop? Is there a way off this train? He just follows it on. So while Job had the city under siege, he put Uriah at a place where he knew the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out, fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. So Uriah dies in battle. Uriah dies in battle. And after that, you find the point where he just goes, you know, Uriah's wife heard that the husband was dead. She mourned. David takes her in, now as his wife. She bears him a son, but the thing David had done had displeased the Lord. I would think that would be quite displeasing to the Lord. And at each point, at each fork in the road, David could have got off, but he was on the train. The sliding door was open and he was on that train. But it all doesn't just start with David just perving on a chick. It actually started in verse one. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, there's a purpose, there's a calling, there's a direction. There's a plan that God's got for David's life. And that includes at certain seasons doing what you're called to do, stepping up and stepping out. And this is the time when kings were meant to go off to war. David didn't go off to war, he sent Joab. Because he's not active in doing what God's called him to do, his temptation opportunity is heightened. He's not in the middle of the great things that God has called him to do. And so he's not around good people that are going, David, let's follow God, don't follow your emotions. The isolation that came by not actually including himself in the plan of God for God's people was destructive. 
And you might go, why don't you go off to war? If you look chapters, if you go back, you can keep on going back and back and back. David has faced betrayal after betrayal. His kids betrayed him and tried to kill him and take his kingdom. It was a wild, wild journey. You think, man, maybe this guy had a reason for not wanting to go to war because every time he goes, someone wants to betray him. And if you wanna follow the call of God, if you wanna actually go through the sliding door of God's best for your life, there will be emotions and difficult situations and difficult circumstances. And at that point, you either get on the train of God's best for your life or you're on the other train, which actually is not God's best and inevitably leads to destruction. We've got to work out how to handle the sliding doors and get on the train. No matter the season, no matter the timing, no matter the relationships, no matter the difficulty, no matter the trauma, is to say, God, you know best. The world might have harmed me, but God, you are the one that's redeemed me. You're the one that's given me a calling. Like the Choose Your Own Adventure book, there are 42 possible endings and you're the hero of this story. Robert Frost finishes off his road not taken poem, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back, I should be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. There is a road less traveled by when it comes to relationships, when it comes to sex, when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to marriage. There's a road less traveled by. And if you pick it, it'll make all the difference. If you don't, you go along with the crowd and it'll seem normal because everyone else is following that way. There's a road that's less traveled by. And you don't even have to know God to actually choose it. I know plenty of people that don't know God and choose actually to follow his principles and it's amazing how it works out. But right now, right in front of you, you can't go back and undo some of the things, but what you can do is you can make the right call now. There's a sliding door moment that's available to you and I wanna help you understand how to pick the right moment, the right sliding door because you're in front of, in front of you is a range of pressures, depending on your stage and age, depending on whether you're married, whether you're divorced, uh, whether you're single, whether, whether you're hoping, whether you're heartbroken, whether your Facebook status says it's complicated, it doesn't really matter, but there's porn, there's parenting, there's marriage pain, there's rejection, that you could be an empty nester, you could have an unsaved spouse or parent or child. You could be trying to serve God. There could be financial challenges. We gotta understand you. we're living in a world that encourages people to experiment with gender. There's, there's, you could be single and struggling to trust God. Does God really have that person for me? And how long to flip do I have to wait? Is it worth not clicking on that internet porn? Is it worth not swiping on that app? Is it worth it? Here's the four very quick tips that are gonna help you pick the right train with the right sliding door. Number one is regardless of emotion and pressure, it's understanding the sliding door of values. The first thing has gotta be the understanding that God's word is God's word. If he wrote it, if he authored it, that is the best thing. The world will have shifting sands. But all I know is that in Matthew chapter seven, it talks about the wise man who built his house upon rock and a foolish man who built his house upon sand. And the rock is actually the full truth, not the part truth, but the full truth of the word of God. That God says, will you build your life upon this? And that is sometimes difficult and sometimes it's inconvenient. And regularly these days, it's politically incorrect, but I couldn't give a flying hoot. Here's what I know is that the Word of God is true and never a lie. God is good all the time and all the time, Ellie, God is good. That's the story right now. All the time God is good. And I might be in a difficult situation, but all the time God is good. His Word shows me that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so where there's a temptation to my purity, I say, you know what? The Bible says don't stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. I'm not gonna stir that up. I could click on the porn, but it says, if I, look, I, if I look at a woman with lust in my eyes, I've already committed adultery. Now I could tell you even the physical symptoms of the porn battle that goes on in our world. The incidents of guys who in their latter years can't actually perform is horrendous. Now if you wanna avoid that, I would avoid the porn trap. 
But I reckon, what a beautiful thing to keep your eyes and mind dedicated to the purity of having one woman, one man to love for the rest of your days and going, I'm not gonna get my eyes and my flesh and my, uh, and, and my energy based upon something online. I don't need to do that. I don't need to go down the line of the hookup culture because I know that God has created me with a plan and a purpose that I've got to have someone that I'm gonna build a life with and not have all these memories of, of one night stands or all these memories of situations that I regret. Here's what I'm gonna suggest. If you're thinking about love and relationships and a future, all I know is that if you're buying a car, you don't look for the one with the most miles on the clock. Some people think that someone you want to marry got to be good in bed. Well, good in bed doesn't include comparisons and heartbreak and trauma. Good in bed is going to be someone who has eyes and mind focused on you and serving and loving you. Now, if you've already stepped over that line or maybe something has happened to you where that was stolen from you, all you need to know is that point four is coming. We're gonna get to it in a second. God loves, God restores, God's got grace no matter what's happened. You might need forgiveness. You might not need forgiveness because it was taken from you. You need restoration. Point four is coming. Just hold on, we're getting there. I wanna encourage you to build upon values. Every parent needs to know that if church is optional, then it will be disregarded by the next generation. If the word of God is optional, it will be disregarded by the next generation. If I've got a spouse, well, that is my spouse. I've said yes till death do us part, and I'm gonna trust God. Someone said to Billy Graham, the world's greatest ever evangelist, well, what would you do if you fell out of love with your wife? And he said, I would get on my knees, I would wake up that next morning and I would not get off, I would pray and I would say, God, transform my heart and I would not get off my knees until God restored the love for my wife. And while he said that in that interview, his wife was on the front row watching, tears running down her eyes. That's the kind of marriage I want. That's the kind of marriage that gives a platform for my sons to watch and go, that's how you honor a woman. That's how you love God. That's how you serve your family. That's how it works. Doing it just for me is a terrible platform to sit upon. I wanna build it upon the word of God. And when the wise man built his house upon the rock, it was the full rock of the word of God. What's the sand? Sand is just eroded rock. It's just the particles of rock. It's just the leftover bits of rock that you like. And what I wanna do is I wanna live my life upon the full rock of the word of Jesus Christ. Not the bits that I like leaving apart, the bits that I don't like that are inconvenient. I wanna say, God, your plan is the best for me. The first sliding door is the door of values. The next one is the door of vision. David, when the kings were meant to go to war, stayed at home and got himself in trouble. I wanna encourage you. Like that youth pastor said to me, don't chase after a spouse. Chase after the call of God. Chase after God and everything he's got for your life. I tell you what, marriage is a long time to be blessed and a long time to be unhappy. I'm gonna encourage you to find the person that you can build a life with, build a friendship with, fall in love with and serve God with for the rest of your days. You gotta understand then what's my God-given purpose? What's my dream? What's my gifts? What's my calling? What's the opportunity inside of my church? What's the confirmation that God has given me? You might need to wrestle with that concept. What's the vision, the purpose that God's got for my life? Psalm 37 and verse four says, God will give you the desires of your heart. And so if you need to wrestle with that, that is a conversation that is worth having. That's why we do life. You might go, well, how do I do this? Why we do life in connect groups? There'll be someone that knows you and you know them and they can be like, hey, you ever tried this? What about this? Here's an opportunity. Because some people have got more of a call of God on the outside, the four walls of the church. That's fine. There'll still be an application in. Some people, their main call of God is inside the four walls of the church. There's always an application outside. And it's wrestling with that with people that know you and you can get feedback from and you can give it a shot. Don't wait until you know it before you try something. You might go to the yes, sign me up desk and go sign me up for something. I don't know what, but sign me up for something. I wanna serve God. I don't wanna miss out on the vision, the direction that God's got for my life. I want to walk into that sliding door. 
I want to go through onto that train that God's got for my life. And you might go, well, what if it's the wrong thing? Well, at the end of a couple of months, you'll be going, well, at least I know one thing. It's not that. There's got to be something else. Sign me up to that. You're not going to be perfect out of the gate. Here's the third one. It's the door of unity. Ephesians chapter 5 talks about this wonderful picture of husband and wife. And it mentions that husbands ought to love their wives like Christ loved the church. They ought to love their wives like, gave up their life. A husband is meant to be giving up his life for his bride. That's an amazing picture of security. And a gal can thrive under those conditions. And it says to the wives, submit to your husband. Now, submission is not subservience or obedience. It's the understanding of submission. If you pull it apart, another one for the English nerds, you've got a prefix, sub, which means to come under. It's under. Submarine comes under the water. We're coming under the mission. And there's a reminder that together, we're meant to actually come under the mission, the direction that God's got for our lives. That's why you want to chase after the call of God, not just after a spouse. Find out who's doing that so we can do that together. And now we get to fight for unity, not fight against each other when we're disunified. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If you're married, fight for unity. Protect, preserve, covet unity. What it means oftentimes is that you have to go, you know what, we disagree. Uh, The Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter four and verse 26, be angry and do not sin nor let the sun go down while you are still angry. The New King James says, don't let your sun go down in your wrath. And I've heard people say, well, if we disagree, we have to stick it out. We're gonna continue talking until this is done. We have to come to agreement. No, 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 no. It doesn't say, let the sun go down in your disagreement because you can agree to disagree. How many times I'm like, hey, babe, it's getting late. I don't know if we're gonna get through this one. This is a big, big story. But could we not let the sun go down on our wrath. I love you, we disagree, we can still be friends. And tomorrow, it's gonna be a new day. And what's the chances God might move on our hearts? What's the chances? But in the middle of all that, I don't want to let the sun go down on my anger. I'm not gonna be angry with you. I'm gonna say, we're gonna unite and God's on our side. And if He's gotten us through everything until this point, He's gonna get us through this situation. I am so glad that I got taught this principle to say, you know what? I'm not gonna let the sun go down on my anger or my wrath. You are loved no matter how ticked I am, no matter how much I disagree, no matter how much I think the way you've spoken to me is really unfair. I'm not gonna let the sun go down on my wrath. We're gonna pray, we're gonna agree to disagree, we're gonna delay the decision, and we're gonna communicate. And when we're, for an extended period of time, still not unified, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call in a pastor. If you're married, you need to have someone that you can go to, that you can say, I'm struggling, wives, I'm struggling with my husband. And please don't go to another girl who's just gonna say, yeah, my husband sucks too. My gosh, does that happen? Wives that whinge about their husbands you're just gonna exacerbate the problem. You're pointing out the faults, and if you're looking for faults, the devil will show you heaps. Isn't it true? By the same token, guys, you need someone to go to who's not just gonna go, yeah, she's a cow. Have another drink. You don't want that. What you want is someone that goes, hey, you know what? If that's your situation, what are we doing about it? What's your response? What's the word of God say? Hey, we should pray. We're gonna, come on, you need to stand strong and be gracious and listen and dwell with your wife with understanding, mate. You wanna find someone who's actually gonna say, let's come back to the values and the vision. What's the word of God say for your situation? If you're thinking, you know what? I wanna get married one day. You wanna find someone that you can unify with. If you're a gal looking for a guy, well, then in that situation, Here's what I'm encouraging you. Look for someone who you can go, you know what, I could unify with the call of God with that bloke. And vice versa, if you're a guy, be looking for a gal that you can go, I could partner with that girl and we could build a fantastic life. 
But no matter how fantastic you hope it to be, there's always gonna be something that hits. There's always gonna be something that's difficult. Welcome to life. If you're looking for ease, if you're looking for everyone to love you, sell ice cream. If you're looking for an easy life, that's the way to go. But if you want some real life, there's gonna be some difficulty. And at that point, you're gonna want someone that goes, hey, man of God, what are we gonna do about it? Let's pray. Hey, woman of God, come on, let's stand and let's follow what God's Word says and let's gonna stand firm. Or what if in that marriage, you've come to that point and you're disunited, you are not agreed. And that happened to me and Bex last year. What do we do? I call up my pastor and I say, please walk us through this with the Word of God. Because I'm standing on principle, she's standing on principle. We're continually disagreed and this is getting more and more difficult and more and more heartbreaking. Will you stand with us? And I called up Pastor Chaz and Fran and I don't know how many times we're on the phone. I don't know how many tears were happening, but I'm so, so glad that when I got to this point that I'd already got on the train of dealing with my emotions, of dealing with the call of God, of building trust, of saying we're gonna actually unite when it comes to difficulty. We're not gonna disunite. We're not gonna divide at this point because God is gonna do something great in our lives. And here's what I know. As we got through last year and where we're stronger than ever before, Now we're stronger than ever before. And if you're looking at a future, you wanna be looking for the person that you can do that life with. But here's the quick question. If you're looking for the person that you wanna do that life with, you gotta be thinking, what are they looking for? What qualities is that person looking for? What reactions, what what emotional baggage do you have to deal with before that person would even sniff at you? door of values, the door of vision, the door of unity. And here's the last one as the musicians come to play something fantastic. It's not on a train. This is actually where you need to get off the train. I wish David got off the train. There are certain situations in my life that I wish I got off the train earlier. I wish I'd dealt with stuff. I wish I'd got God's help in my life to lead and guide me through difficult times. The fourth thing is not a door onto a train. The fourth thing is hitting the emergency stop button on the train and getting on God's yellow taxi cab of His grace. There's two parts to that grace. Number one is the grace to fix, to restore, to win over those emotional tendencies you have, to choose to follow God, maybe to mop up, maybe to apologize, maybe to rectify situations that you've messed up, maybe to learn, maybe to forgive someone and learn how to start again and to do things differently. God's grace, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse nine, it says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Your weakness is the perfect place for God's grace to rock up. You think you've got to wait until you've got it sorted for God's grace to come. No, no, no. It's the perfect place in the middle of your weakness. His power, His His grace is made perfect in the middle of your weakness. I wanna bring it to God. I haven't got it sorted. I didn't choose the right train. I didn't choose the road less traveled from Robert Frost. I chose the wrong train and I need God's grace right now. His grace is made perfect in the middle of your weakness. So don't come to God pretending like it's all okay. It's not. Stop faking, it's not. His grace is made perfect in the middle of your weakness. And you might go, hey, it's right for you, Dave. It's right for you to go through those crises and get through and build a life and have a great marriage. It's right for you to raise those boys. But I tell you what, I chose a train, I chose a sliding door right here. There's a couple of times I chose a a terrible train. And I hit the emergency stop button. And every time when I hit that emergency stop button, because this was a trajectory of dysfunction, following emotion, following temptation, hit the emergency stop button and there's a taxi cab of God's grace. He never leaves you and never forsakes you. I've made some dumb calls. I've made some emotional calls. I've made some fleshly calls. I've made some selfish calls before. And every time I hit the emergency stop button, there's a yellow taxi cab. It's always been around. It's always followed my train. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. Don't ever say that someone's far from God. They're not. 
the yellow taxi cab of God's grace has been following them all day. Never think that you're far from God. He loves you, friend. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. His grace is ready to help you in the middle of relational situations and decisions that set you up for a great life. But today, maybe you need to hit the red emergency stop button and go, get me off this train and get me in God's taxi cab of grace. And He says, I got you. I got you, fam. You're covered. This stuff's not going to be held against you. You're loved. And I'm going to get you home. You don't deserve God's grace. I don't, you don't. We've all made mistakes. And today, He offers it. His love in exchange for my stupidity. His love in exchange for my poor decisions. I knew better, but I chose my way over His way. It's called sin and God goes, I got you. The taxi cab's right there. You don't have to pay for the taxi cab. You just got to hit the red emergency stop button. Open up those doors and get on that new taxi. Come on, how about you bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to pray for you here today. Father, today for your grace, your love, despite our sin and mess, despite the poor decisions that we've made, God, your love never fails. Your love never fails never fails. I thank you for your grace that's poured out for every single person here today. But I thank you that you've got a great future and no matter what we've done, no matter what's in our past, today with the sliding door of values and the sliding door of vision and the sliding door of unity or building a life towards that unity. When we're married, God, I pray today, Lord God, your supernatural grace, Lord God, protect and cover every single one of us. I thank you today that no matter what the past is, Lord God, today, I pray for men and women that embrace you, embrace all that you've got, embrace the sliding door onto the train of your grace. God, today I pray, Lord God, that we would make those decisions to jump on to your pathway of success. And I pray today for those that need to get off that train where we've chosen our way instead of yours. I pray your love and your grace would knock down the walls of our heart. Let your love bring us home like a taxi cab. Come on, with every bow and every eye closed in a moment of privacy and prayer, if that's you and you wanna say yes to Jesus. You might've made relational mistakes. Or maybe there's other ones. Maybe your sins are in this area or maybe they're another area. All I know is that God loves and God forgives and God gives a brand new start. So today, if you wanna say yes to Jesus, either for the first time or coming back to Him, I would love to pray with you. I'd love to pray for you. So if that's you, I'm gonna ask you to pop your hand up high so I know who I'm praying for. Yeah, God bless you. I see that hand. That's awesome. Thank you. You can pop that hand back down again. Is there anyone else you want to say yes to Jesus? Either for the first time or coming back to Him. I'm so glad that someone gave me the opportunity to do this. The best decision I ever made was not just saying yes to coming along to church, but pop my hand up and saying, you know what? I need God in my heart. I can't do this without Him. I didn't have every question answered, but I knew that God loved me. And I knew He had a great plan for my life. So I'm like, sure, whatever it looked, let's do it. I'm so glad that the pastor gave me an opportunity to respond and I wanna give you an opportunity to respond. You might be thinking, what happens if I pop my hand up? Well, evidently people clap. They got your back. So if that's you, you wanna say yes to Jesus. How about you slip your hand up high so I'll see it. Recognize it, you can pop back down again. Maybe you've never asked Jesus into your life. Maybe you have, but you've let it slip and today's the day to make it real and make it right. Maybe today's your day to make a public confession of your faith. I'm gonna to count to three. This is your chance. We're gonna move on just a second. If you want to say yes to Jesus, doesn't matter age, bank balance, color of skin, God loves you. You can't earn this. You can't deserve it. Who needs to make that call? One. Who else needs to make that call? Just pop your hand up high so I can see it. God will knock on the door of your heart, friend. He won't knock it down. You get to open up that door. Two. Who else needs to make that call? Please don't walk out those doors without knowing Jesus in your heart. Without knowing the love of God in your heart. He loves you, friend. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. None of us do. But yet we open up our hearts and receive. Last chance to look across this auditorium. Three.
three. There's been one person make that decision and we congratulate and celebrate. But I, I, we're going to pray a prayer. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer after me. But I don't want you to do it alone. And I reckon there's a chance that someone you're right on the edge and you think, you know what, I could pray that prayer between me and God. So I reckon we all pray this prayer so no one does it alone. How about we all pray a prayer of commitment to Jesus. Say it like this, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your love for me, despite my sin and mess. You include me in your family, and for that I'm so thankful. So tonight, Jesus, I ask you into my life to forgive me of my sin. I thank you for your grace that I don't deserve, and I freely receive today. I don't want my sin anymore. I want you in my life from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can we put our hands together and congratulate the person making up the brilliant, brilliant decision? It's so good. There's a bunch of people I wanna pray for here tonight. I wanna give opportunity for people to pray and to make a decision that says, you know what? No matter the train I've been on, I wanna be on the train of what God's got for my life in relationships. There's a sliding door opportunity right now. You can't change the past, but you can say from today, I choose God's way. I want God to forgive me, lead me, direct me. I wanna do it God's way. And so you might be married, you might be divorced, you might be engaged. I know there's a few of you around here. It's not too late, don't you? No, it's all right. You might be single. I don't know your situation, but I do know that God knows you. I know He knows your heart. And I know that He's got a brilliant future for you. It doesn't always happen at the pace <laughs> or the way that we'd hope, but all I know is that God's best is His, His best for you. So if you say, you know what? I want to follow God's way in the way that I do relationships. We're going to sing this song, and this is your chance to stand your feet and declare. They're going to sing victory. It's our chance to sing. God, I give my life to you. I want to live your victory. I want to live your ways. I want to follow you with all of my heart from this day forward. If that's you when you want to sing this song and you want to make a declaration of I'm following God and I want everything He's got for my life, then stand your feet and let's sing with all of our hearts in Jesus' name. Shaken, the victory is yours. You're riding on the storm. Your name is unfailing. Though kingdoms rise and fall, your throne will stand.
Father, I declare, oh God, over every man, woman, and child standing before you here right now. God, I declare your grace is made perfect in the middle of our weakness. God, we bring to you our weakness. God, and we decide, God, we wanna say yes to following your values, your word, the full word, the full truth, and not the particles that happen to be politically correct or easy. God, today we say yes to You as the author of Your Word and we say yes to Your Word. God, I pray, Lord God, Your grace and Your covering over every person making that decision today, that no matter what the future might hold, God, we choose today the sliding door that dictates to every opportunity, every decision, over every temptation, over every path, as an option in front of us, Lord God, today, we choose the sliding door of Your Word and Your grace, of Your values, of Your vision, Lord God, of a future that's following You in every aspect, in every decision, in regards to our relationships, knowing that as we trust You, Lord God, You cover, You protect, and Your grace is made perfect in the middle of our weakness. God, I declare, Lord God, Your grace upon every person here today. Right now, as we're praying, as we're worshipping, I feel like there's someone here, there might be a bunch of you, and you're worried, you're anxious or fearful about the future. You're worried in regards to relationships or even your children, and maybe you don't even have those children, but you're anxious and going, God, can I trust You? God, this is looking more and more difficult. You can see darkness in the world and you're going, man, this is gonna be so hard. The promise of God is my grace is made perfect in the middle of your weakness, that the shining light of Jesus will actually burn brighter in the middle of dark days. And God has called you to bring light into dark spaces and life into dead places of our community. Come on across this place. How about you lift your hands? God, I declare today, Lord God, Your grace is made perfect in weakness. God, I declare, Lord God, You haven't given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. God, I declare, Lord God, the victory of the Word of God, the victory of the ways of God. God, over the people of God, Father, I thank You, Lord God, as today we make a decision, the sliding door of obedience to You, the sliding door of a yes to God. Father, I thank You that it's a set up. Come on, there's single people right now. There's decisions, single people. Come on, lift your hands. Everyone, if you're single, lift your hands to heaven. Come on, there's decisions to be made. I tell you what, that marriage is a long time. It's a trust in God. Some of you have been waiting for a long time and it's still a trust in God. It doesn't actually change. It doesn't change. But there's a decision to be made, a sliding door now that dictates every decision to the future. The following God, there'll be temptations. I guarantee there'll be temptations. I guarantee. You gotta know they're coming. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. I guarantee you can trust God and that His ways are perfect. Not always easy, but they're absolutely worth it. Come on, if you're single, lift your hands to heaven. I wanna pray the grace of God over your life. Father, I pray today, Lord God, for people that would chase after God, that would chase after the call of God, that would chase after the purposes of God. Father, I thank You for a generation that doesn't chase after a spouse, but chases after the call of God, chases after the things of God, a hunger for You and Your Kingdom, a hunger to serve You in in the middle of every season. God, this current season and every season coming up, Father, I pray today, Lord God, Your grace Grace, God, upon every individual, every person, Lord God, You lead and guide and grace and strengthen and encourage in Jesus' Name. Come on, if you're married, lift your hands to heaven. If you're with your spouse, hold their hand, but I wanna pray today, His grace over your life. If you're a parent, I declare the grace of God over your life. If you're a grandparent, I declare the wisdom of God over your life as you as you believe God for the generations coming. But I stand with every married person right now and declare your grace, your power, your might and unity. If you're next to someone who's married, put your hand on their shoulder and believe God. They're in the middle of a journey of believing God for their marriage, for their community over their family for the next generation. Father, we pray today, Lord God, Your remarkable strength and grace in the Name of Jesus. God, let Your Spirit pour out on these men and women. Pour out on these men and women. Come on, tonight, across every stage and age, there are challenges. There's a sliding door in front of you. Maybe you're like me and you didn't know how to handle conflict and it's 
messing you up. You don't know how to handle it in a godly manner and it sounds easier when it comes off, comes out of my mouth than when it actually comes to working it out. There might be some dysfunction you've got to bring to God and say, God, heal me. There might be some difficult times that you need to go, God, you know what? You got me through that. And God, you're going to get me through this right now. There'll be some godly advice you need to seek out. Don't go to ungodly advice. That's a terrible idea. If, if you're looking for financial advice, go to the millionaire, not the person with an opinion and a get-rich-quick scheme. You want to go somewhere where you can go, what's the Word of God say? What's the way that it plays out? And encourage me to do that. Father, I pray Your grace over every married couple. God, I pray, Lord God, Your grace over every single person, every person dating, courting, engaged. God, every divorced person, God, every empty nester. God, I declare the grace of God. Father, as we lean in, I thank You that You've given every one of us, godly men and women, to get advice from. You've given us Your grace to navigate. You've given us the Word, Lord God, to obey and to follow and to trust You. And God, today, we make a decision. Just chill for a second. There's a decision in front of every person to leave behind some stuff of the past. Sure, it got you here. But it's leaving the past behind and going, God, there's a new day and a new chapter. There's a road less traveled and it's right in front of you. It's a decision to say, God, I want to trust you. I want to follow you. God, I want to walk in purity for the rest of my days. There's a stepping into everything. It's not just stepping out of something. You're stepping into the grace of God. You're stepping into everything He's got for your life. I'm going to sing it one more time and I'm going to pray and declare over your life but lift your hands across this place. Come on, sing it for us, Lily. Sing it. God, all oh, power of victory is yours. You're riding on the storm. God, I declare today, Lord God, your grace your on these people. A new season to step into. A new grace no to embrace and to walk in in the name of Jesus. A new hunger for you and your things, your ways, your direction. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, a new grace upon this generation. God, a new hunger, Lord God, that would shine brightly. God, in every workplace, in every place of study, in every home across this great city. God, I declare today, Lord God, a wildfire of Your grace and Your power and Your might. A trust, Lord God, in every season. Lord God, I thank You today, Lord God, for a new day and a new season and new opportunities, a new strength, Lord God, to walk in the ways of God, the power of God, the grace of God. Trust in You. God, no matter what the world says, God, no matter how strange it might seem, the trust that Your ways are higher. Lord God, we choose the road less travelled and we choose Your grace. God, in the middle of the temptation, in the middle of the difficulty, we choose Your ways. into your presence and we get to just lay it all down before you that if there's anything that's holding us back that you can take that 
that Your grace is bigger than anything, that Your grace is bigger than any trauma, anything that's holding us back, any, anything that's chained us, Lord. And one thing that someone once said to me about God's grace, um, because I once said to someone, I don't know how to accept it because it's so big and it's so amazing and it's God's grace and it encompasses everything. And I said to this person, I said, because they were like, God's grace covers that. God's grace covers you. And I was just like, I don't know how to accept that. And what they said to me stuck with me. And it gets me through nearly every single day that I need God's grace because I need it every single day. And they said, all you can do is say thank you. That's all you can do. You can't earn it. You can't do anything for it. You can't work harder to get more of it. But every single day that you need God's grace, all you can do is look to your God and say thank you. And so as we go through our weeks, that's an amazing message, Pastor Dave. First off, can we give Pastor Dave a round of applause for that? Amazing message. But throughout this week, I hope that we can just learn from that and grow from that and their amazing foundations. But with God's grace, just every morning to wake up and say thank you. Every moment that you need more of it, just say thank you and accept it. Don't fight it. Don't try to logic your way out of it. Just say thank you. How cool is that? That, again, Pastor Dave, thank you so much. Um, incredible, incredible message. So thank you. And uh, that is the end of our service tonight. But before we do go, and I want you to get a little bit rowdy about this because I do have an announcement. Um, and I expect so much rowdiness to come from this group because I know that you can do it. But I want to congratulate a freshly engaged couple, Sam and Liberty. Chuck up that ring. Let's go. Hello. Congratulations. I'm not going to say that I should be the reason that these two are together, but I will claim it. I, that was my connect group. If you want to get engaged, go to a connect group. Honestly, it's where it happens, guys. Um, all the Red Frogs team, also where it happens. Daisy and Sam, yep. Um, so, look at single, ready and mingle. And Grove Trek. Oh, just come see me at the Yes Sign Me Up desk and I'll show you where you can find a husband or a wife. Yeah, Yes Sign Me Up to it. Um, anyway, this is why I shouldn't be up here, but yes, sign me up desk, go get a coffee, have a chat and get some dinner with some friends. We'll see you next week. <laughs>